Manchester City against Arsenal also coming up this weekend and it's a chance to see Pep Guardiola taking on Mikel Arteta. What is their, their relationship like, Jules? I think it's, it's obviously very respectful. They like each other, but they're not the closest friends either. I don't think they see each other out of when they used to work together at, at City, for example. And it's interesting that Pep to replace Arteta has gone to get someone completely different. You would think that maybe he would have gone for someone with a similar a profile or brains and he went for Juan Manilo who's far more experienced much older than Arteta that would bring him something very different less I think. likely to go and get a job of his own yeah <laughs> or maybe even to contradict him I yeah. think because I think Mikel at times really you know was bored enough to say to Pep I don't agree with you there I don't think Juan Manilo is that kind of guy well Arteta lots have been said about the difference that he's he's made at, at Arsenal in terms of the the way things are is it about results or is it about knowing that there is a plan in place. This no. looks like something that has a future that is long term. There's a plan in place for definite. And um, I think when you, you look at Arsenal's last couple of results and the way well, they... Just, sorry, just before you... How long is it since you feel as though or you have felt that Arsenal have had a plan? Uh, since, since, since Arteta's come in, a, a, a couple but of weeks... But then before that? When, no, no, no. When was the last, when was the last time? Um, even, even in the latter stages of Arsene Wenger, we, I didn't know what we were doing. I didn't know what's going to happen and we were quite easy to dismantle. Same thing happened with Unai Emery, but I think that after a few weeks with Mikel Arteta, you could see the pattern of what he wanted to do. He wanted to play out. There was more organisation. The midfielders knew what they were doing. I like what he'd done with Xhaka. Kind of dropped Xhaka back. So then Saka went forward and he just dropping his hold. It just, you could just see things like, oh, that fits. And, you know, it just started to work. And you, you could actually see us playing out from the back and it working with structure. You know, I mean, and you, you, like I was saying, the, the two games where Arsenal won recently where... They were, it just didn't work. It didn't work for them. It didn't play well. But they found a way to, to win the two games. Mm. And that is, is, is where, where Arsenal are now. Games that they would have maybe drawn or even lost. The reason that I interrupted right here, and I won't do it again <laughs> to, to ask that point, is, is because it, it sort of sets up the job that Mikel Arteta had and still has on, on his hands at Arsenal. That it isn't just about moving forward. It's also yeah. about sorting out the some of the mess that was left Yeah, behind. he took over a non-believing group, didn't he, of players pretty much the same. Yes, Arteta's brought in a few players. Always helps when you win. If you win the FA Cup, all of a sudden he comes in there ringing the, ringing the FA Cup, walking in the dressing room, dancing around with the players. Feel good factor. Sign Obama Yang, huge, huge signing for the, for the football club because that is their game plan at the moment. And Arteta, and I'm sure it's an evolving identity which he's got because the... Arsenal fans won't be happy with watching this for years and years. He will evolve it. You know, it is a counter-attacking style. You know, he's asked him players, he's convincing the likes of Aubameyang to run back into the left-back spot and Lagazette dropping so deep into the midfield areas and Pepe on the other side when he plays. Whoever it is, they know they have to work very, very hard out of possession and not concede any spaces. And that's going to be crucial against Man City. It's almost like Man City is sitting ducks for this counter-attacking side with so much pace and firepower up front at, at Man City, of, of Arsenal. They will just sit in. They will let City have all possession. Arteta knows them as well as Pep knows them. Um, and he know where the weaknesses are. And the weaknesses are, for Man City, defensively, because they get exposed. The midfield do not really cover up the back players. That's not how Pep likes to play. It's how we love to watch football players. Certainly I do. I love watching Pep Guardiola the size of low free spirits, all playing off-the-cuff football, you know, with a certain amount of organisation. But he wants them to score goals and outscore the opposition. I think it'd be very difficult to break down a very rigid Arsenal side. Um, and I think it possibly could be a perfect game for, for Arteta. Yeah, it could be very nicely set up for them, potentially. We'll talk about City as well in, in a second and the threat that, that they pose. But you'll know that Arsene Wenger has a book out. The reason you'll know that is because he's been interviewed absolutely everywhere <laughs> uh, about it. And he's been asked a lot about Mesut Ozil. And, and he is a sort of recurring theme. And it almost feels that everything that, that could be said about him has been said until the international break, when suddenly Mesut Ozil pops up and says... Arsenal are letting Gunasaurus go, I'll pay his wages. <laughs> and then suddenly you've got the, uh, the Mesut Ozil story that you never thought you were, you were going to see. But look, Wenger made the point, it's very sad about Mesut Ozil for him as a player as much as it is for the football club. But is that it done now? Is, is his time at Arsenal finished and it, it's just going to fizzle out in the background? I, I, I feel that's the way he's taken, yeah. I think if, if they had had any offers for him this summer, he would have, they would have tried to sell him. 
He played a bit at the beginning of the Atleta, although that was a very different style of football and team than what we see now, where the team, as right here, would explain, is far more advanced in the project than they were back in December, where, where Meza played and didn't do too bad, actually. I think that now the intensity is wrong for him. I think the way they play, the system, the formation, they, in that team that we saw, the 3-4-3, there's no room. They, he, he can't play anywhere. He can't really play on the right instead mm-hmm. of William. He can't play on the left instead of Aubameyang. Certainly not in the two in midfield. So there's, there's just no room for him either. And I, I just think that that plus maybe a few issues at training with Arteta, it's just, yeah, yeah it looks like he's the end. And so you look at the way that Arsenal are set up at the moment and the new players who've, who've come in, how cleverly have they, they picked players to fill gaps in, in that system that, that Mikel Arteta wants to play? Well, centre-half is something that, um, you know, with William Saliba. Um, Saliba is um, somebody that we're, we're hoping will kick on. He's obviously not ready, but we've seen Gabriel's come in at centre-half and he's it's very good. I think that we've been very fortunate that the Saka's emergence through the youth team has been just magnificent. I think the Currently top... current holder of the nicest man in football in right. title. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I think um, when you, you look at, the, I think the Thomas Party signing is, is, is again, is the kind of signing that that's who he wanted. We're not talking about a midfielder that people may feel is just a stopper and a destroyer and impossible to him. This guy progresses the ball. And the problem that Arsenal have, as, as well as um, Danny Ceballos can play on the ball and as well as Jacare's nice passes, they don't progress it. Mm. And that's what um, Thomas, Thomas Partey will do. He'll get the ball into areas. He can run with the ball. He can pass the ball. Hopefully he can activate the right-hand side just as much as Arsenal's left-hand side. Because what Mikel Arteta wants to do, and Tim's right, yes, you know, that we do play to play counter-attacking. Because at the end of the day, we have to stay deep because we've got the pace up front to hurt teams. But now you get a midfielder who, who can say, hang on a minute, if we win it, we can be a little bit more construct with, with yeah. the way we get up there because you can't have a player like um, Aubameyang scoring two goals in one game and then you get another game totally isolated of chances at all. So you've got a midfielder now who can, alongside someone like Willian and hopefully Pepe will continue to get better, you've got people who can create further forward in the pitch. Partey is a massive signing for him. Huge. I mean, that was a problem uh, area they had. It's a, it's a, it was a void in their midfield area, and he gives them that, gives them that thrust, gives them that power. Also, I think a massive thing for, for Arteta to bring him to the football club is his mentality. I mean, he's played for Atletico Madrid under Simeone. And what does he demand? I mean, they win, they win one nil like 12 times a season. You know, that's what they do. So he's got the responsibility. <coughs> he knows he's reliable. He sticks to the game plan. And if anyone, if we've got a manager in the Premier League at the moment who's got a real identity at game plan, it has to be Arteta. You've seen him in the, the international break in, in action. Is he, is he ready to step in at, at Arsenal as well, despite not having necessarily mm. been around his new teammates that much? I think he would be ready. Physically, he's fit. he played with Ghana the two games. I think there's no problem. He would train, like, you know, he would have trained Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, for example. We were saying with Brighty, maybe it's just not the game to start him now. Maybe you can bring him on, I don't know, depending on how the game goes. To start him, I would wait a little bit, just for him to see and yeah. have a look. It's hard to play against City, even if it's not the greatest City. It's still, it's still a bit difficult. Maybe, maybe don't start him this one and, and then there's, there's a game after that straight mm-hmm. on. Yeah. Absolutely agree. Just Does he learn the plan? The he might need to him. learn the plan. You yeah. know, he might need to wait a little bit. You know, Jurgen Klopp does this when he brings signings and he doesn't throw them in straight away. He gives them time to have a look at the situation, how the identity of the, the game plan of what the manager wants. And I think that's what Mikel yeah. would do with Partey. I think as well with um, him having to play Atletico Madrid is, is that, um, you know, yes, he's had to play a different kind of way, but I think that he was actually suppressed at, at, at Atletico Madrid. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because of the kind of midfielder he is. And I think that people may feel that he's a different kind of player and that's why they might think oh he's mm. one of those destroyers and that he's totally the opposite yeah. mm. and that is what I'm excited to see from him. So once he's had time to have a look around and, and listen to what Arteta wants from him this is what you think Arsenal are, are going to look like at, at pretty much full strength. How, yeah. much, how much do you appreciate this, this starting 11 for Arsenal? Yeah I'd love to see it um, because I think that that's starting 11 and we're talking about playing at the top of their game, you know, maybe Willian, Pepe, if Pepe can continue his form, would probably take Willian's place. But, you know, you look at that left side, awesome, you know, natural. Those three guys there, Xhaka, Saka, Kit, Tierney, all left footers, natural balance there. And Pierre and Bikabamian coming in off the, off, the, um, off the left there. Then you've got Willian, Partey will be coming through. Gabriel, you know, with the experience of David Luiz there. Hector Bellerin is playing for me. 
some of his best football. I'm really pleased to see him back to, to something like we know how good he is. And I think Suarez is maybe pushing him, and it's a good thing. But that, for me, is probably Arsenal's strongest team, m maybe with Pepe in it. Who's the most important on, person on that picture? For me, yeah, yeah. Uh, Aubameyang. And not the, not, not the man on the left-hand side, Mikel Arteta. Well, of course, we, yeah, Mikel Arteta, without a shadow of doubt, but we're talking about on that, on that pitch. pitch. yeah. Because if we can start getting uh, Thomas Partey and, and, and Saka and all these guys to, to get that ball another 15, yeah. 20 yards up the yeah. pitch and get Aubameyang coming in off there, he takes half chances. I, it's interesting listening to you talking about the saying maybe Suarez could be coming in, Pepe, if, if he was back up at a full pelt. And it, there's lots of strength in, in that Arsenal squad outside of, of that Maitland-Niles potentially yeah, yeah. coming Academy. in. There's lots of cover. Yeah, Ceballos, who obviously is not yeah. in the starting course, 11 yeah. now. And you've got then the youngsters like Rhys Nelson mm -hmm. and Eddie Nketia, who has done amazingly well with England under 21 uh, in this international break. So they, they, there is depth there. I think they can even switch to play. Yeah. We know that Mikel likes 4-3-3 formation coming from Pep again and, that, uh, and how they work together. And I think Partey would fit very well in, in, in there too. So you could move on when Saliba is ready. Yeah. He can come in in the back four, in the back three. So I think there's a lot of options for them. They just, just, just need that little extra that maybe Thomas yeah. Partey would bring in terms yeah. of creativity because at times this season, I think Arsenal are 19th in terms of chances yeah. created, yeah. which is obviously not enough. Yeah, and he could be the player who... who starts the moves that kind of build towards that. Just, got, just, to, just to progress the ball more. Yeah. Like you say, with, I think last season he had 54 like, take-ons and out of 60-something. Out of yeah. And he, he was just like, I think Arsenal's best player was Ceballos with 27. So if you can get anywhere near those numbers, then you're going to be creating a lot more for the guys up front. You don't want to see people, you don't want to see Lacazette coming too deep. You don't want to see that. Yeah. You want to see them stretching the teams, giving space to people like Partey to go and operate in. And then you get people like Bamian coming in and maybe getting those passes through because he's got that about him, Thomas Partey. And you, you were suggesting that Arteta was the, the most important person in, in that picture yeah. because it's his vision that kind of holds it all together. It's interesting how much he's taken from Pep Guardiola and how much of it is, is just his own way and, and adapts to that group of players that he has. Well, I'm sure Mikel would like to go and play like Pep plays. I'm sure he would eventually, but he knows he's going to work with what he's got. Mm. Um, and, he's, and there was some bleeding there. There was a little bit of problems what he was left and, and he's had to build it slowly and I think he's doing a good job at that winning a trophy obviously massively helps players start, start listening to you um, and like I say he's asking players to play for Arsenal it's one of the biggest clubs in the country you know and that's why we talk we talk about Partey who's been at Atletico Madrid and yes he, he's had the shackles on him a wee bit you know yeah. but now you would think that he it's important that he doesn't go to Arsenal and think Oh, now I'm here, I've arrived, I'm in London, I'm in the Premier League, the best league in the world, and what I'm going to do is start being something different. Art Teta will tell him, it's a great art of management. When you're managing top draw players who can go to some of the biggest teams all over the world and tell them to do the, the dirty stuff in the game, the horrible stuff, well, no one really wants. You're not getting headlines from running back, tracking back, tackling people. And give you the headlines if you're a striker. You need to be scoring goals. But he's got a knack of making top, top draw players work hard first and foremost. And he knows at the moment that's the way he's got to go about it. Whereas Pep, on the other hand, always had that. Always that winning that, winning that ball back. And I think they've come away from that a little bit at the moment. I think they've got a few problems at Manchester. Yeah, well, I wonder if that, that's part of it, is that that was Mikel Arteta, one of Mikel Arteta's main roles at Manchester City, was that link to the... The players and that almost kind of psychological role with with them and, and getting that out of them does is it is it the same with with his new assistant for pep guardiola no certainly not start with the language because i don't think Juan Marido speaks very good english like mm. like like Mikel and, and certainly Mikel was a player not that long ago you know far far more recently than pep was and yeah. even more than than lilo is so i think the players related to that because some of them have even played against Mikel Arteta in the Premier League. And I think that makes a big difference if you're the assistant and you do that link between your manager or that technical staff and your players because you're still one of them very much. Mikel was taking part of the rondos. He was taking part of every yeah. drills that he wanted to, etc. etc. Juan Malilo can't do that. Pep Guardiola doesn't do that anymore even. So I think that was a big part that they lost and somehow... You know, I think there was rumours that they tried Vincent Company to, to be the assistant or at least in, be part of the technical staff, and that would have been very much who to replace Arteta with. Uh, and just to finish on, on Arteta and Arsenal, let's not forget, it's not even a year yeah. in his project. And I was at the Liverpool game when they lost 3-1, but he said at the end, 
you know, Jurgen Klopp took five years to build this yeah. incredible team and this incredible <coughs> club. But I'm not even a year in my project. And even Pep, it took him more than a year yeah. to build a successful City team. His first season was not very good in the Premier League. So let's give him time. But already what he's done in nine months is pretty impressive. Amazing. Yeah, and it does feel he's getting the time, Mikel yeah. Arteta. Yeah, There's well, no suggestion that, no that people way. are impatient, that they, they, they can see the, the progress. But maybe there is some impatience <laughs> at the moment around Manchester City in, in, the, sense that, in, the, in the sense that they had not just that they haven't, started this season particularly well but the fact that they finished so far behind Liverpool last season and maybe even more significantly that they they didn't make it count in the in the Champions League at the end of the season no I think that it must have been tough for City with the way Liverpool emerged you know the, the season before you know Liverpool chasing them down and they've beaten them by one point you know Liverpool lost it on 97 points and then the next season Liverpool just absolutely just wiped the floor with them mentally knowing they're coming in that season the one one point season then they came and then they totally obliterated you and then they started the season again there seems to me to be at Manchester City uh, a problem in, mentally now because they they almost you can't call a team like that shot but you know we're talking about Pep going into what his, his fifth season the first time with the same club yeah, yeah. you know I think it might be the first time he's rebuilding yeah we're seeing the problems he's, have, he's had with Man City trying to get a defence that's worthy of the football that they play offensively. And it just seems like at the moment, the team, what I saw against Leeds especially, um, was a team that just looked a little bit wary. Um, I thought Ke um, Kevin De Bruyne looked, I wouldn't say tired, but he looked a bit like a, a, a frustrated figure. Um, because... So when... So as, a, as someone who watches football, yeah. you watch a player and, and you might think, they look tired, they look frustrated. But what, what does that come from? What is, what's, Help. Like in a, in a practical be, sense, what is that from might a be player's looking, point of view? He might be looking around and, and, and thought about the, the past glories or something, what he's seen, how we used to be. And then he, he's in and around, and they're not like that. There's no David Silva there, there's no Aguero up top, there's no Vincent Company behind. Players that he can fit in and just go about his business now. It just seems to be now for me with Kevin De Bruyne a much much more responsibility on him mm. and I think that that might be taking its toll at the moment um, I think that you're hoping that someone like Ruben Diaz can come in and settle quickly I think he's gonna have to and when you go to a club like City you have to you have to settle quickly because they, they're looking to win the league they're looking to go deep in Champions League so you can't give them too much time to to have to settle in they have to settle in you know, you've got people like Fernandinho having to play in centre-half. They're missing something from the midfield when he goes there. Because Rodrigo, for me, he's not got that defensive capability that Fernandinho. So they're losing a lot. They've lost company, who's, who's massive down that centre. Silva down the centre. And, and Aguero. There's a lot going on there that if I was a player, I'd probably start feeling a little bit like, oh. and they train as hard, like you said, Julian. Yeah. They really, really train intently. So it can get to a point where, you're, as a player, you're feeling a bit like... I'm kind of tired, man, and Liverpool yeah. is so good. Yeah. Is, is there an issue with recruitment? <clears throat>